Uh, thank you, uh, and welcome to everyone. Um, I'd also like to welcome Brad's family, uh, Julie, uh, Ryan, and Reese. Um, welcome to Toronto. Um, I've I've known Brad for a long time. I've I've known him from afar. Um, I've I've always uh, heard about his ability as a uh, as a, a hockey person. Um, his, his assessments of players, his leadership skills. Um, I've gotten to know him and, and uh, you know, as we've worked together, um, as we've worked in the league, but not together. Uh, and always really liked him and admired him for, for the qualities that he brings. Um, but over the last uh, little while, uh, getting to spend some time with Brad in person uh, has really confirmed with me what a lot of my colleagues and friends say that, uh, He's, he treats people well. Uh, he's a smart hockey person. He's an experienced manager. Um, he's a good manager of people. Um, and I just think that we're really excited to have him come here. I think it's, uh, it, was, it was an added bonus that Brad has uh, not only had experience with the, with the Coyotes, but also has had experience in a Canadian market. Um, and again, like I said, as the, the more we talked, the more time we spent together, I just thought that uh, Brad would be an excellent fit for Toronto to help us get to the next level. So I'd like to introduce uh, Brad Tree Living as the 18th general manager in Toronto Maple Leafs history. And over to Brad. Thanks, Brendan. <clears throat> um, a little warm in here. <laughs> There's a turnout. They told me they, you guys follow the game over here. So um, first of all, I just want to thank Brendan um, and, and, and the entire Toronto Maple Leafs ownership Group MLSC. It's been uh, it's been a it's been a great process getting to know Brendan. As we said earlier on at the beginning, uh, regardless how it goes, I think in this game, anytime you can form and create and and build relationships, it's important. So regardless of whatever the outcome was, um, as Brendan knows, we've known each other a long time, but never really spent a lot of time. Uh, we joked uh, a good player that we had back in the day, Rafi Torres, we had in, in Phoenix, and we. In Brendan's former life, we, I was spending a lot of time with Brendan, with Rafi there for, for a little bit of time. But um, So thank you to Brendan, thank you to everybody. Um, <clears throat> before I go too much further, I, I, I first want to um, make a couple of comments of Calgary. Um, first of all, the city, uh, the fans of Calgary, it was our home for nine years, raised our kids there. Um, it's, a, it's a very special place to us. The people are very special, the city is very special. Um, and it's, it'll always have a, a, a warm place in our heart. Um, I got the pleasure to work for Murray Edwards, the entire Flames ownership group. Murray's a, a great owner, has been a great mentor to me. Um, and, and John Bean, uh, again, a, a good friend, a great professional mentor. Don Maloney, <clears throat> who's been a close friend of mine in the business for a long time. Uh, they're in great hands there, and I wish Connie um, all the success in the world as he, as he takes over the manager job. Most importantly, the players and staff. Um, I get close to the people I work with. I, I, I believe that you don't manage these days. Some, some do, some may. Um, you don't manage from an office up in the, in, 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 in the building. You manage, you manage with the people. You're shoulder to shoulder with the people. And um, the group there, the players, uh, the staff, are, are, I'm close with to this day and, and will be for the rest of our lives. So to them, good luck. I wish them all the very best, except for a couple of games a year. Now to Toronto. Um, you know, I've seen people sit in the seat before and, and they talk about um, it's Toronto. And until you're here, I don't think you really understand it. As we were going through this process with Brendan and we're talking uh, to my family and my girls and, and sort of the, the, the close network that I come, uh, that, that I rely on and lean on, uh, we kept coming back to it's the Leafs. And you guys are all, you, you live it every day. From the outside, we don't get to live it. But there's a special feeling when you come in here as a visitor, when you come in here scouting, when you come in here as, uh, when you were young as a fan, it's the Leafs. It, it, it means something. Um, and so to me, I sit in front of you today excited, humbled, um, looking at this as a great opportunity, but also know this is a great great responsibility. There's a responsibility to the fans, um, the people that follow this team, the people that work here, um, but our players. You know, to me, that's, that's where we want to get to. I've got a responsibility to that group here to help them get to the level that we're trying to attain to. Um, 
the real draw at the end of the day when you look at all the things surrounding this place and it's a it's a special special place the draw is the team we're hockey people at the end of the day and this is a, this is a really good team um, it's led by world-class players um, it's hard to get it's hard to get talent uh, they've got talent I've I, like I said I get to watch this from a, 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 len a far lens um, to get to work with these athletes is going to be very very special I know there's been heartache and there's been some frustration in terms of our um, of where we've been in the playoffs uh, lately um, it's a hard league but this team is, has put themselves in a position and we're going to try to keep putting ourselves in a position to keep knocking on the door keep knocking on the door keep knocking the door and eventually push through so um, Again, thank you to Brandon. Um, thank you for everyone for showing up. I'm excited. Um, we want to get through this stuff and get to work. So thank you very much and, and uh, look forward to any questions you may have. Thanks, gentlemen. Just raise your hand. Sorry. Oh, hey, hey, Brad. Yeah, Terry Coach yeah. on the Toronto Sun. Welcome to Toronto. Thank you. Uh, I might as well get this started off the hop. You mentioned world class players. Uh, have you had a chance yet to talk to Austin Matthews or Judd Moldaver and how important is, is that uh, is that negotiation, if you will, uh, to, to get going here? Well, thanks, Terry. It's, it's start of July 1, I guess. I, yeah. uh, I'm glad we waited so long to get to that topic. <laughs> um, you did say world class players. <laughs> I think we, knew, we knew who you were getting at. So. Um, you know what? I've I've had a chance to communicate. I communicated with a few players. It's it's been a busy couple of days. I communicated with Austin via text. Um, I know Judd. I've got a strong relationship with Judd. Um, you know, there's a, there's a there's a great personal relationship, but uh, Judd's excellent at what he does. Um, you'll find from me, Terry. We're not going to get into any public discourse about contracts. I obviously we know where these contracts are at. Um, Austin is is one of the elite players in the world. You know, we're not talking about a, a good player in the, in the league. We're talking about an elite player in the world. Um, getting, getting to Austin is a priority. Um, but, but outside of the contract stuff, number one is just getting to build that relationship. You know, it's not walking down and, and, and trying to arm wrestle about contracts. It's getting down and getting Austin, a me getting a chance to meet him. But more importantly, having Austin get a chance to meet me, know what we're about, and, and just, just, just talk a little bit. So... That's priority number one. Um, we know all the things as it relates to all the players in their contract situations um, and the timing and all the challenges ahead of us. Um, but we're, we're prepared to, to, to get after it. So I'm, I'm excited to not only get a chance to meet him, um, but thrilled to, to be able to work with him. Hey, Brad, Dave McCarthy, NHL.com. Um, what's your perspective on the job that Sheldon Keefe has done? Have you had a chance to communicate uh, with Sheldon since he took the job? What's your approach in that standpoint? Yeah, I have. I have had a chance to communicate with Sheldon. I, I didn't, you know, I, I, I joked with him a little bit on the phone. I haven't, I don't have a relationship with Sheldon. We, we spoke a couple of times years ago, um, but I've had a chance to talk to him. I'm going to get with him. You know, there's a lot of things that are priorities. Sheldon is as, as well. Um, and as I said to him, it's a little unique situation, right? We can call it whatever we want, right? We, we, we're all big boys here, you know, um, there's been a change, um, you know, he's in, a, he's, in a, he's in a unique situation, but that's, you know, that's the business. Um, my outside lens of Sheldon, I look at a team, was it, 115, last two, two years as, as a full-time coach, 115 points, 111 points. Um, I think he's a really good coach. Um, my view is, Determining whether a guy's good, bad, or, or indifferent, you have to work with him. You have to get to know him. So we're going to sit down and we're going to we're going to go through it. Um, I'm coming in with no preconceived notions. I went to Calgary nine years ago. Um, Bob Hartley was there. Didn't have a relationship with Bob. Bob coached. I think he was the coach of the year my first year in, in Calgary. So I think Sheldon is, has done a lot of really really good te things. I look at how a group of really skilled players has gotten better at, you know, in checking and, and defending and doing those things that you need to win. So we're going to sit down and, and we're going to be, have a thorough process and try to do it as quickly as possible and, and, and come to a conclusion. A lot of the focus uh, for this team the last, I guess, seven years has been that core four group of players, uh, Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander. How open are you to the idea of making a big move to change the culture here of this team? Yeah, you always hear these words, you know, big words, culture, and, and, and I, I sometimes think it gets overused and overplayed. <clears throat> the good things here is we got really good players, okay? 
you look at where these players are drafted, right? You just have to pick the number where they're drafted. There's a lot of pain to get to get good players. Um, so that having those players excites me. Um, and the, like I said, they're world class players. We're going to review everything. You know, I I I I, I want to you know stress strongly. I, I'm not about coming in and making a statement, right? You can throw a body under the tarmac and it, it might look good for a headline, but are you, are you getting any better? At the end of the day, it's about getting better. And, and just being different doesn't necessarily make you better. The other thing I'll say on that is, and, and again, this, I'm coming in from an outside lens. You know, this, this, this idea of the core four and, and all those types of things, my job is to protect them, right? It's to protect them. And I'll, I'm first fiercely protective of my players. But this can't be about the core four. This is about the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's not about four players, not about two, it's not about one. It's about the 23 guys that we're going to have in this organization. So I understand the spotlight's bigger here. I understand um, we're so fortunate to have all you people that, that care greatly about uh, this team because of the fan base we have. But it's about the Leafs. And... The success of this team or, or whatever, tr or whatever um, challenges we have isn't because of four guys or two guys or one guy. It's about the group. And uh, for a manager coming in, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to have the talent that those four represent as well as everybody else on this team. But you're not opposed to it. We will look at all things. Uh, Br Brendan, Brad is your third GM. You might have a third coach, depending on what happens to Sheldon. I'm just wondering how much responsibility you shoulder or bear for, for one playoff series win in nine years, and how much pressure are you feeling from below or above on a personal level after nearly a decade and, and limited playoff success? Yeah, I, I, you know, I felt pressure from the first day I took the job till today. Um, I, I, uh, I feel it every day. I've come in with a responsibility to... to um, take on uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs in the very beginning to make us uh, an organization that was capable of winning, um, an or organization that, that our, our fans appreciate. Um, and sometimes along the way, you do have to make changes. So, um, you know, this is not about whether or not I'm suddenly feeling pressure. I've always felt pressure, and I will. Um, that's, that's one of the attractions of why I came to Toronto in the first place and why I've done what I've done throughout my entire career, whether it was as a player or taking on responsibilities at the NHL. Um, so uh, I think that, that my job has always been, whether it was in year one or year three or, or, or now at the conclusion of year nine, is what can we do to become better? And that's always been my north compass. Hey, Brad. It's Matt Larkin here with dailyfaceoff.com. I'm just wondering, are you able to confirm if there will be any restrictions on your involvement in the draft, just based on any overlap with your time in Calgary? I'm not. I, I can answer that. There, yes, there, there were some restrictions uh, imposed by the Calgary Flames, but we're not going to go into those details. I will say that I've talked to Brad about that. We have, we have an excellent head scout in West Clark. Uh, we have an excellent scouting team. We pick in the first, fifth, and sixth round. Uh, they are still doing their job. They are preparing. Uh, that part won't change. We have the utmost confidence in our in our scouting staff, but I won't go into those details. Brad, Kevin McGrant here, Toronto Thank Star. You. Nice to meet you nice again, meet you. sort of. So, um, is, even Kyle Dubas, in his final press conference here, referenced you that trade for with with Florida um, as as a as a big moment, something that to be admired, a risky move, something you had to do. Can you walk us through that trade? Like, do you have any regrets with? with that trade with Florida in the uh, final and and Calgary missing. I, I mean, I know Calgary had more points than Florida, but still, can you kind of walk us through that trade and your thought process and, and your thoughts on it now a year later almost? Sure. Um, well, Chucky, who I'm very close to, he's like a son to me. He, he reminds me all the time that, you know, his success is always gets my name brought up, right? So he, he says, you're welcome. Um, it was unique. Every, every situation, every team, every year has got unique circumstances, you know. Um, <clears throat> Matthew, as I said, came to us. And I'm not, I'm not going to go blow by blow on it, Kevin. Uh, but he came to us last year, which I was appreciative of. Um, we, I'll never fault the player, but said, you know, I'm, uh, it's time for me to move. I'm not looking to, to, to sign long term here. So you go into the market. Now, there were some challenges, no question. Um, you know, you're playing with a, felt like a two and a three, um, 
in your hand and, and the, everybody else has got a pair of aces. So we worked hard, we made an organizational decision where our team was at in terms of the growth of our team and it, at the development of our team that we wanted to, to look at opportunities to, to fit within the window, the uh, competitive window we're in. So we worked at it. And I know, listen, Matthew's a great young player. And we knew from the day, moving 25 year old top players is, we never wanted to move Matthew Kachuk. This was not something that, let's be very clear, that I said, you know, woke up one day and thought, let's move Matthew Kachuk. Um, circumstances presented themselves, you deal with them as best you possibly can. He's a, he's, he's a top player, he's a wonderful player. Um, that's the first chapter of that, of that trade, you know. Jonathan, McKenzie, the pick, you know, there's a prospect involved. We'll see, we'll see, you know, time will, time will dictate and, and tell how all things play out, but every time you're gonna get, you're gonna have challenges every year and you just deal with them as best you possibly can. Brendan, uh, after Kyle moved on, there was some discussion in the market about how much autonomy the GM has to make moves and make them quickly uh, in this structure. And now Kyle takes on the, the president's job in Pittsburgh today. Can you just give us a sense of where that, how that works here in Toronto, how much autonomy the GM has? I mean, you know, I've always believed that um, in process, and I've always believed that a general manager should have a good, strong process. And we've been lucky here in Toronto, whether um, the, the two people I hired, which was Lou Lamorello um, and Kyle Dubas, had good process. They got, they drew information from the people around them. Um, but ultimately, the decision has to be made by the general manager. And that's how I've always operated. Uh, that's how I'll continue to operate. I think that Brad is a collaborative person. I think he's got, uh, you know, I think he's looking forward to meeting our staff and, and so many of the resources that we've built up here in Toronto. But I think he also has, you know, people in the hockey world that he relies on as well. Uh, and so Brad and I, our relationship will not be all that different than the, the very good one that Kyle and I had. Uh, and, but ultimately, I, I really do feel that, um, that the role and the responsibility has to ultimately come from the general manager, so that doesn't change. Hey, Brad, uh, David Alter with the Hockey News. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm wondering if you've had an opportunity to kind of look at who you want to bring in from an AGM standpoint or maybe some other support staff, or are you kind of waiting for maybe some of the other decisions to kind of fall before making those kind of decisions? Sorry, from an, from an assistant manager? Yeah, like no. anyone that you've worked with in the past that you've already identified yeah. as someone who you're going to bring in. Well, first, I, you know, and I should have mentioned earlier, I think, you know, one of the real draws for me is, is that we talked about the people here, um, that, that, that goes off the ice too. Brandon Pridham, I've known Brandon a long time going back to, we, I used to think, I thought we had to mail him a check when I was in Arizona. We felt like he was on the payroll when he was working for the league because uh, we were owned by the league. But um, so we leaned on him all the time. I said, hey, we're, you know, we're all, this is all from the same mothership here. And he's, he's, he's to me, in my mind, one of the very best, if not the best at what he does in the league. So, um, you know, I, when you come into a job, I think it's really important. It's, it's easy to sit up here and say, you know, I got all, uh, we got all these problems, but I, I'm the beneficiary of the people that came before me. Kyle Dubas is a very close friend. We have a very good relationship. Um, I think he's extremely smart. I think he's talented at what he does. And like I said, he's, he's a, of the manager group, he's a, he's a close confidant. He's left me some really good pieces on the ice, off the ice. Uh, before him, Lou Lamorello. Before him, Dave Non or Dave Nonis, I think. Before him, Brian Burke. They all have their fingerprints on this team. You know, there's players from Berkey's age uh, era in terms of Morgan Riley. Um, so it's a roundabout way of saying part of the draw here is the work that people have done before me. Uh, most recently, Kyle, who's really good at what he does, and I'm the beneficiary of that. And that that falls off the ice. Now I'm going to sit with those people, and we're going to have discussions, and we're going to find out specific roles um if there's areas that we can help ourselves um and look at people to bring in we may do but again i think we've got really talented people here now i got to get to know them hi brad uh, you, you sit here on june 1st and it's obviously such a big month on the hockey calendar i'm just wondering over these next days and weeks what your biggest priorities are well, hi chris it's, i was i was going through this the other day when brendan and i were talking uh, it's it's hard to say that we, there's a lot of there's a lot of priorities, right? So that number one, there seemed to be a lot at the number one spot. So um, obviously we've got we got some contractual issues um, that we're going to deal with, and we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to build those relationships. Um, 
We've got Sheldon's situation. Uh, we've got to get to know. We've got to get to know the the staff. We've got a draft to prepare for. Um, there's the communication amongst amongst the managers community. Right. I'm a little bit behind here right now. Right. People have been talking and figuring out what they want to do. So we'll we'll we'll. I, we'll go pedal down here pretty quick. This is there. There won't be. This is not the dating game. We're going to get right into um, pushing hard here. Um, so there's a lot to get done. Again, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of people here. We got we got a good staff. We got an experienced staff. So I'm going to lean on them. But you know, number one, I got to get out and see Austin. Number two is I got to. We got number one A is is the other contractual issues. We got a coach that we've we we we've got to get some clarity and, and meet with. So. You know, I don't. I don't. By by saying one's more important than the other, you're you're downgrading everything. But there's a lot to do, and uh, the clock is ticking, as they say. Hey, Brad, uh, Lance Weber from the Toronto Sun. Hey, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, your relationship with uh, Geo and Brody, and and what kind of a resource they might be for you as you come in? Yeah, it's good. It's good to see those guys. Geo, it's good to see him still playing at 75. Um, not a lot of guys do, <laughs> and. Uh, um, yeah, I was with them a long time. They're good. They're good men. They're good players. They're good people. They've got good families. So, um, you know, I, I was I was been texting a little bit with Gio, and and uh, uh, it'll it'll be good to connect with them. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I don't, you know, there's a few people here. Luke Shen, I know a little bit, right? We've got a little a little bit of a relationship with. So, getting to know the players that's the, that's the important thing to me. I like I said, it, it this is not you don't manage from from an office anymore you you you, you know you 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 got to get to know them you got to you got to know what drives them um but those are those are two good men there uh con congratulations brad luke Thank fox sports that uh, you, you're talking about the the talent of this team from afar in terms of roster construction why hasn't this group gotten over the hump in your opinion you know what luke there, there's a few things and and before i get too it's a little bit premature, and it's not. It's not a way of dodging the question. I, I always feel, I always feel in the same way when I went into Calgary. You, there's there's an external lens. Until you get behind the curtain, it's it's you know you, you got to know all the the reasons why. Um, number one, and it's it's not a, you know, it's a motherhood answer, but it's the truth. It's hard to win, right? Like we're looking at a final here right now with two really good teams, but. One of the teams was a Pittsburgh win away from not making the playoffs, right? It, it's tight. The margins are thin. It's, it's, it's hard to win. And I know, and I know that, that, that sounds, people want, people want the answers. We're going to try to get the answers, but it's hard to win. What, I, what I've liked about this team from afar is we, we've, and I refer to it as we yet already, but, but they've, they've, they've got lots of skill. They've got lots of talent. But each year, and, you know, for me, like when I look at our sort of how, from our data, how we looked at this team, I mean, it was, it was a top, it was elite team five on five offensively. Um, when you look at its chances against, so I think it was second in chances for, I think we're 14th in chances against, but their disrupt, their disrupt percentage in terms of checking, to me, that's checking, it was second. So you, and I, and again, I point back to the coach, he's gotten top players to check. And at the end of the day, you know, checking, you can't win until you check. And, and you need talent, you need skill, but that skill's got to play at both ends of the ice. And I, I've seen an evolution of that, um, but it's hard to win. It's hard to win. Beyond that, I think, you know, we just got to dig in and we got to get familiar with it and, 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 and find solutions to the issues that we got. Brendan, about a half hour before we sat down here, your former GM was announced as, <clears throat> excuse me, the president of Pittsburgh. He'll be debuted an hour from now. What do you think of that timing? Well, I, I think they're like us. I don't think it was intentional timing. I've been in contact with the um, with the CEO of, of of Fenway, Sam Kennedy. He and I are very close. We've we've talked over the last week uh, several times about Kyle. So um, I think they 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 need to get to work as well. Um, fully endorsed Kyle. I thought he told Sam that he would be great for their organization, uh, and I'm very happy for him. 